as a high priest of the good things to come. With the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and of calves, but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You are welcome. Welcome this Sunday morning. It is all about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I hope you are gathered with your family. If you are by yourself, uh, listening to this word by yourself, as we are about to start, I will recommend that you call everyone. Let it be like a Sunday morning service. Let everyone be seated and be fed by, by the, and be fed the word of God. Let everyone be seated and be fed the word of God. Let everyone be seated and be fed the word of God. Hallelujah. Let everyone be seated. You know, before I can pray, uh, I'm a very inquisitive person. I ask God a lot of things. In my quietness, I speak to God. It's either audibly or in my spirit, man. One of the things that I've been discussing with God is what we are going to hear today. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, I love you so much. I love you so much. Thank you that you are here this Sunday morning. Releasing your word in season. To those who are weary, to those who are hopeless. To those who need empowerment. To us, mighty God, who need you more than ever. I thank you that you are still the same God who changes not. The same God who created Adam and Eve, who created the heavens and the earth, who created Adam and Eve. The same God who spoke to Abraham. The same God who spoke to Isaac and Jacob, who later became Israel. The same God who delivered the Israelites from Egypt. The same God who spoke to Moses through the burning bush. The same God who opened the Red Sea. The same God who spoke in Mount Sinai. You are the God who changes not. Father, I love you so much. I love you so much. Speak to us who are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall surely be glad and be prosperous in it. Amen. We are starting a new series. Uh, last week we concluded being intentional and purposeful. And last week's sermon was uh, be intentional and purposeful with your salvation. What a powerful word that God released. I will encourage you to go through the, our, our media channels, Facebook, YouTube, listen to that word again, especially about being intentional and purposeful and other messages that are there. However, this Sunday we are starting a new series, an interesting one. We're going to have an interesting journey, The Cross and the Church. Our sermon today is the cross and the church. You know, it, this sermon came up of the discussions and the conversations that I had with God, questioning what is happening currently, why, why people are, especially the church, is so confused and fearful. Why, why am I using those words, even though it's not everybody who's not confused and fearful? 
If you check on Sundays, the malls are full, the church is empty. Even when, even when the president said, go to church, 50 of you, I think when he said 50 inside, 100 outside, we should be 150 every day in Sundays. Some, some, of, some, some of people should be saying, we'll be outside listening to the word. The 50 should be catered for inside. But it's, it, most churches not happening like that. In, in fact, I was driving around Alberton town. I realized that some of the churches that we used to know have closed down. Since the first lockdown, they've never opened. And I know some pastors who have never opened. So in this conversation, in my sleep, when I'm awake, I continue to speak to God. And he told me that the issue is on the cross. The cross has been removed from the church. And the Bible without the cross, it becomes another motivational book. It becomes incomplete. The church without the cross, it becomes another religious gathering. It's incomplete. We are not different from others who are worshipping false gods if we remove the cross. And that is a serious issue. I know that I love the blood of Jesus Christ so much. I'm a, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say I'm, the very, I'm a fan of blood, but for the lack of a better word, I just love the blood because I know that once you acknowledge the blood, you are acknowledging the cross. But I want us now to acknowledge the cross. In my introduction our message today, I will be all over Sangha Misi as usual because the cross, the message of the cross is wide and yet very straightforward. The Bible has two things. It has the pre-cross and after the cross. If we, if we say that the Bible has two things, the pre-cross message and after the cross message, where does that put the cross? In the center. In the center because every, everything gravitates from, to the cross. Revelation, from Revelation to Matthew, it's gravitating to the cross. From Genesis to Malachi is the cross. It's all about the cross. So there's no way that the church of God will be able to stand the onslaught of the enemy without the cross. We are, we are bluffing ourselves. You know, one of the things, one of the decisions that I've taken is that uh, I don't want to preach anything else ever again except Jesus Christ and him crucified. There are good sermons out there, very good sermons, but any sermon that omit the cross is incomplete. So many churches, when I say the church, believe you, I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about you, the child of God. If we go back to the book of Matthew, because I said I'm laying down the foundation, I'll be all over. If you go back to the book of Matthew, Matthew 16, Matthew 16, Jesus Christ asked the disciples from Matthew 16, uh, from the 14, 13 down there, whom do people think I am? Okay, let us read it. When Jesus, from Matthew 16, 13, when Jesus came into the, the region of Caesarea, Philip, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the Son of God, am? So they said, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others Jeremiah, or, or, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? That's the question that the church must answer. Who do we say Jesus is? 
Because he asked his disciples. The disciples answered Jesus Christ by what others are saying. They did not answer him from the point of a relationship. They did not answer Jesus Christ from the point of the revelation that they heard about him or they heard or they have about him. They answered him by what others are saying. They say, some, some say you are John the Baptist. That's what the church, that's the state of the church is today. A church that does not have a proper relationship with the cross will do what some are saying. A church that does not have a proper relationship with the person of Jesus will do what some are saying. Some are saying you are John the Baptist. Some Elijah, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But Jesus Christ was not interested in some. He's not interested in ideas. He's not interested in what in the thoughts of people. He's not interested in theology. He's not interested in what, but whom do you say Jesus Christ is to you? If you want to understand who Jesus Christ is to you, go to the cross. Understand the message of the cross. Without the cross, you don't know Jesus. Without the cross, we cannot have a proper or a, a complete relationship with Jesus Christ. But check this. Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. The moment Simon Peter answered, he, he went to John 3.16. He said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But, but we need now to check why should we not perish? What is the cause of us not perishing? The cross. The finished works of Calvary. The cross. And Peter said, you are the Christ. And what makes Jesus the Christ? The cross. So the church... We are the most powerful institution that has ever been created by God. If you read down what? And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Right now, the church is working on the revelation of flesh and blood. Some say, some say you are Elijah. That is the revelation of flesh and blood. But Jesus Christ is looking for the church. That is not working on the revelation of flesh and blood. He is looking for the church. That is not working on the revelation of some. But whom do you say I am church? Whom do you say Jesus Christ is? I'm determined. Not to preach anything else, but Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's the completeness of the gospel right there. Hallelujah. And he said, flesh and blood, Dina has not revealed that to you. In other words, Jesus Christ is saying, do not walk on the revelation of flesh and blood. Do not walk on the revelation of flesh and blood. Do not depend on the revelation of flesh and blood. What is the revelation of flesh and blood currently? The revelation of flesh and blood currently is that we shall die because there is this and this and that. But no, Jesus Christ is looking for those. Listen to this. He said, but my father who is in heaven, he's looking for those who will walk 
by the revelation of his father who is in heaven. And check, after that he said, I, I, I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. He say, you, you shall be built. You are his church. Not the building that you go to. He's referring to you. He say, you shall be built. He's referring to an institution. That is an institution of the believers. A spiritual institution. Ecclesia. What is an ecclesia? A governor of rulers. A congregation of rulers. Those who reign and rule in this world. That is the church. That is ecclesia. He said, on this rock, I will build ecclesia. Those who reign and rule. How will they reign and rule? By the message of the cross. By the message of the cross. Because Paul said, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who don't believe. But wisdom to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whom do you think I am? Whom do you say I am? That's Jesus Christ. Let us put back the cross where it belongs. So, you know, there are, there are some scriptures that when I read them, I said, if the church can understand them, no, no, no one will be sick. No one will be sick. Pastor, you are being arrogant. I'm not being arrogant. I'm being truthful. I want to look at all the apostles, the 12 apostles who believed the gospel and, and released it to us. None of them died of sickness. None of them died of sickness. The only person who, who came closer to sickness was Peter. His mother-in-law was sick. She had fever. That's how close he was to sickness. Not him. Listen to, 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 to the word. Proverbs 4.20. 22 he said, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. Hmm. The word of the cross is health to all our flesh. John 6, 63, say, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit. And they are alive. I'm telling you this because I want to tell you about the cross. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself for me. What is there? The cross. This is all about the cross. You know, The cross was not made for Jesus. The cross was made, was made for a sinful man. But Jesus hung, was hung on our space. Those, I said, what? He said, no, the cross was not made for Jesus Christ. The cross was made for the cursed. And Jesus hung there in our space. He hung for our past, present, and future sins. So, in other words, what happened on the cross is timeless. Currently, the church has so many items in her display. In a display window, the display window of the church is so cluttered such that the cross is no longer visible. There are people who have been born again for years, but they cannot say much about the cross. They know everything about blessing. They know everything about anointing. They know everything about 
whatever that the cross can bring, but they don't know the source of what they know. The cross. They've been born again for years, but they cannot describe the fountain of their salvation, the cross. So I would like us to go back a little bit. I love what Paul said in Acts 27, verse 23, 24. They were in the ship, in the shipwreck. They were in the storms, in the sea with others. But I love, I love what Paul said. He said, for there, by, so for there stood by me in, the, in the, this night an angel of, the, of God f- to whom I belong and whom I serve. I, I love the confidence. He said, the angel of God whom I belong to, whom I serve. Why? The cross. What is the purpose of the cross? The cross was to resolve the sin problem between man and God. We'll go deeper into this. And what is sin? If you can go back to the book of Genesis, the biggest sin that Adam and Eve committed was not murder. I'm not condoning murder. They did not steal. They did something that separated separated them from God. That is separation. So sin is not necessarily committing some terrible crime or deeds. It is failing to give God his rightful place in our lives. You know, we cannot be a church that is separated from God by failing to acknowledge what reconciled us back together to God, the cross. That's problem number one. We, we, we know everything else. We know praise. We know worship. We know the perfect and good word that will stand up and clap your hands and say, wow, he spoke such a powerful word. But if a word is void of the cross, it's nothing. That word is nothing. We need to give God his rightful place in our lives. We can no longer afford to live the lives that withhold from God the glory that we owe, we owe it to him. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ. What Jesus did on the cross when he died for our sins. Our healing is there. Our progress is there. Our lives are there. Everything that we need is there. If you can check Hebrews 10 verse 9 and 11 and 12, he said, then he said, behold, I've come to do your will, O God. That's, that's Jesus Christ. He came to do the will of God. What was the will of God? To be crucified. I mean, that's something that, that, we, that, that we must go back to. What is, the will, what is it that, the will, that Jesus Christ came to do? To be crucified. That is the will of God. Why is to be crucified? So that we can be reconciled back to God. So Jesus Christ said he came to do the will of God so that he can be what? Crucified. If Jesus Christ considers the cross so much that the cross is the will of God, him being crucified is the will of God, how can the church live out of the cross, outside the cross? The window of the church not to be cleansed. The cross not to be the only thing that is visible to our lives. You know what? It is something else to know about the cross. It is something else to live with the cross. And it's something else to live within the cross. 
those who live, live within the cross are those that are in Christ. Unstoppable. Untouchable. Hallelujah. Let us check what Hebrews 9, 11 to 15. Check this. But Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation not with the blood of goats and of calves but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all having obtained eternal redemption that, that is the key having obtained eternal redemption it is in that eternal redemption, it, it, your healing is in the eternal redemption. Your, your, your restoration is in the eternal redemption. Your deliverance is in the eternal redemption. And where is that eternal redemption? How did it come? The cross. Nothing but the cross. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without the spot to God, where did he offer himself? The cross. We acknowledge the Holy Spirit, but I want to put it to you that every process of crucifixion from the beginning of the Bible, from Genesis, the Holy Spirit has been preparing Jesus Christ for the cross. The sin of the, the fall of man was not a surprise to God. The Holy Spirit has been preparing from hovering upon the face of the waters to, to, to being the living spirit inside the man, to living man when man fell from, 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 from grace. That, that's one thing that many people are forgetting. That Holy, when Adam and Eve fell from the grace, why did they lose the Holy Spirit? And when in Genesis 3, when God said, the seed of the woman will crush your head, will bruise your head. Whom was he, whom was he talking about? Jesus Christ. In Luke, in Luke 135, when, when Mary asked Jesus, the angel Gabriel, how could I be pregnant? And the angel answered him, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. And he was to be born shall become what? The son of God. What was the Holy Spirit doing? Preparing the cross. So we, we, we cannot have a relationship, a proper relationship with the Holy Spirit outside the cross. It is not possible. Hallelujah. So he said, so he said who through the eternal spirit offered himself without the spot to God. Who is that Jesus Christ? Who is the eternal spirit? The Holy Spirit. He offered himself where? In the cross. Child of God, put back the cross where it belongs. Let the church put back the cross where it belongs. The center. And it is that cross when the cross was revealed in Genesis 3, when God said to Satan, the, the seed of a woman will crush your head, he was, he was talking about the cross. When it was revealed in Genesis 3, the cross began to move. It moved. 
It was working invisibly so with the eternal spirit. The cross started a journey to Golgotha. They raised the altars. What was the altar representing? The cross. Let's see what did God say about the altars. What was the altar representing? The cross. The journey of the cross started. We see God taking an animal, slaughtering an animal, covered Adam and Eve. He gave them a glimpse of the cross. Still, people did not understand. He said, it will need a sacrifice for me not to see your sins. He killed the animal. He covered them. So that does not see their sin. It was the introduction of the cross. And we see Abraham taking Isaac to crucify him. His, his one and only son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The introduction of the cross. And the angel came and said, Abraham, do not kill your son. A lamb was caught in the thicket. He took that lamb. He placed it on the altar representing who Jesus Christ. And he named that place Jehovah Jireh. The Lord shall provide. Then the provision of salvation started. The floods came. Noah put all the animals in the ark. That represents in the covenant. That in the ark of covenant, there shall be safety. People shall be saved. What was the ark representing? The covenant of the cross. That in him there shall be salvation. Even if a flood of diseases and sicknesses shall come, the more the flood came, the ark went higher. Isaiah 15 and verse 19. When the enemy comes like flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. There was always a continual lifting of the standard. And after the floods, Noah created an altar, erected an altar. What, what was he representing? The cross. So we see the chain of the cross. The eternal spirit, the Holy Spirit introduced himself to Moses through the burning, the burning bush. He spoke to Moses. Moses, I saw the suffering of my children. I heard and I remembered my covenant with them. What covenant? The covenant that God entered with Abraham. Where? In the altar. What was in the altar? The sacrifice. What was in the sacrifice? The, the promise. And the alt, the cross again is, intro, is introducing itself to Moses through the burning bush. Moses doesn't know that, that, that Christ on the cross is there on the, burning, on the burning bush. Because talking about deliverance. And there's no deliverance without the cross. But Jesus is not yet born. The seed of a woman is not yet given. Moses is given a rod. The rod is coming from where? From a tree. Cursed is everybody who hangs on the tree. That the curse shall be upon him who hangs on the tree. Moses is holding a part of the cross. He does not even know. He threw the cross down. The cross became sin. A snake. He does not know. And he picked it up again. It became the savior. Meaning the, the cross will take all the sins. The chain of the cross continues. The plans came. By the result of the covenant. 
The last plague, the last plague, Jesus Christ is introduced as a lamb that will be slain, and his blood will be put on the lentils. And the way they put the blood on lentils, it represented what? The cross. The cross has always been there. But how do we move away from the cross? And, Jesus, and God gave a specific instruction. If we go to Exodus 20, verse 23-25, He said, You shall not make anything to be with me, gods of silver or, or gods of gold, you shall not make for yourselves. An altar of earth you shall make for me. You shall sacrifice on it your burnt offering and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. In every place I record my name, I'll come to you and I'll bless you. If you make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it of a hewn stone. If, for it, for it, or if you use your tool, you have profaned it. An altar is in, a cross is introduced. It shall not be out, it shall be built of what? Of what God has provided. But there is something specific that God mentioned about the cross. Deuteronomy 16 21. He said, You shall not plant for yourself any tree as a wooden image near the altar which you build for yourself to the Lord your God. He said, Nothing should distract. The attention to the cross. You shall not plant anything near the altar. Nothing should distract the attention to the cross. Meaning everything. The cross should be visible in the church. God knew when he was giving this instruction. That we will plant some. Every fancy thing, fancy doctrines will be introduced in the church. Fancy things will be introduced in the church that look good in the eye of man, that satisfies the soul of a man, that look good for the world, that the world will praise that that church is good because of the relationship that we have with the world through what we have introduced in the church that distracts the cross. Diluting the weight. God said, no, you shall not plant for yourself any tree or wooden image near the altar. The cross should not be cluttered. There, shall be, there should be nothing around the cross. Nothing around the cross. Why? God again is introducing the cross to his assembly, his people. They indeed build the altar. What is our relationship with the cross? What are we doing with the cross? I want to put it to you that if the church can remove every clutter, anything that distracts us from the cross, the power of the cross will fully manifest to the church. Nothing can stop the church of God. Because he himself said, he will build it, not us. You must allow the cross to build the church that Jesus died for. Because only the message of the cross will build his church. Many have lured people away from the cross. They are telling them about their past, present, and the future. Nothing about Jesus. We call you ourselves men of God. You cannot call yourself men of God without telling the children of God about the cross. That was introduced 
by the eternal spirit. Who is the eternal spirit? The Holy Spirit. The message of the cross is still relevant as it was 2,000 years ago. Nothing shall ever defeat the cross of Jesus Christ. It is not possible. I want to put you to child of God. Leave everything else. Go back to the cross. Go back to the word. Let me tell you, when you focus on the word of God, you are like a person seated on the cross receiving the blood fresh from Jesus Christ himself. And in that blood, there is victory. In that blood, there is healing. In that blood, there is deliverance. So you need the cross back in your house. Your children need to know about the cross. Your family need to know about the cross. We need to know the statistics of the cross. How many times did the Bible mention the cross directly or indirectly? We must know that. We are busy quoting any other statistics except the statistics of the cross. Hallelujah. We need to understand the involvement of the Holy Spirit to Calvary. Do we know about that? The church needs to know that. Let me read again. Oh yes, Lord Jesus. Ribo sitarikashia. Beso tarikasi rabakoshiate. Besendi mbako sitarikashia. Lord, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the healing that comes through the cross. We thank you for the cross. Pirikasa. Mbesende kaparikosa. Jiande rikaso tarikesha. Sandimbosi rabekesi atam. Hebrews 9.14 says, How much more shall the blood of Jesus who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God. Who through the eternal spirit. Who is the eternal spirit? The Holy Spirit. Let us look at the ministry of the Holy Spirit towards the cross. The works of the Holy Spirit towards the cross. What did he do? The first work of the Holy Spirit. You must write this down. You must know them. Is incarnation. When Mary conceived Jesus Christ without the involvement of men through the Holy Spirit, Luke 135, that was the first involvement of the Holy Spirit of, 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 uh, to, to the cross. Number two, baptism in the river Jordan. The Spirit descended on, on the Son, and the Father spoke of his approval from heaven. Matthew 3, 14 to 17. Read that at home. Public ministry. How God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good. What was he preparing for? The cross. What was Jesus Christ's public ministry for? By the power of the Holy Spirit. He was showing men how men will live outside the lordship of the devil. Because when men fell from sin, Satan became the father of men. When men fell from grace, Satan became the father. So, but when the Holy Spirit anointed him for the public ministry that Jesus carried so successfully, he was also showing us that from the cross, you will be able to live a life of victory from day to day, season to season, hour to hour. You will declare things. You will speak healings. You will raise the dead because of the reason of the eternal spirit. The crucifixion. Jesus himself offered to the Father 
through the Holy Spirit. It took the power of the Holy Spirit for Jesus Christ to be crucified. If it wasn't the control of the Holy Spirit upon the, the Holy Spirit, he was, he was the one who was orchestrating all the events to the T. It was not man. The Romans, they were not making decisions. It looked like they were in charge, but they were not in charge. It is the eternal spirit who was working for the eternal redemption of man who orchestrated all the events from the garden of Gethsemane to the tomb and the resurrection. It was the Holy Spirit who was at work for the sake of the cross. Ribo sorry, Kashi. How can we miss this? How can the church miss this? How can the church miss this? The spirit of the eternal redemption. It was him who made Pilate to wash his hands, not to release Jesus Christ and free the criminal. It was the works of the Holy Spirit. It was the Holy Spirit who gave the strength to Jesus Christ to carry the cross. And it was the Holy Spirit who chose Simon the man from Africa, to help Jesus Christ to carry the cross. Why? Because Africa is chosen for the cross. That's the sermon for another day. It was the Holy Spirit who gave the strength, the Roman soldiers, to lift up the cross when Jesus was on it. After they've nailed his hands on the cross. He was he orchestrated every event to the T. Why? Revelation 13, 8 says he was crucified before the foundation of the world. Holy Spirit has to take the copies of the eternal crucifixion and put it at the present time so that it can suit what happened in heaven so that your redemption can be timeless. That's what gives the cross the power. It is not the wood that we make to symbolize the cross. It does not have power. The power is on the revelation of what happened. What was, what was the role of the Holy Spirit? If you know the role of the Holy Spirit on the cross, you will know that he's equally involved in your life right now. What? To match the finished works of Calvary in your life. Be it healing, be it provision, be it edification, be it whatever that you need. Because he was involved for the cross from the beginning. The resurrection. The father resurrected, resurrected the son by the, by the spirit. Acts 2.32 This, this, this we must read. And Romans 8, 11, Acts 2, 32. This Jesus God has raised up, of which we are all witnesses. Romans 8, 11. So the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwelt in us. So the Holy Spirit has been involved. And the most important part, the birth of the church, the Pentecost. You see, you, you, you can never understand the works of the Holy Spirit without the cross. The works of the Holy Spirit does not start on the day of Pentecost. It was the, it was the culmination of what has started in the book of Genesis. When Jesus Christ said, you shall receive power 
when he has come upon him. He knew what he was talking about. Because he started is the spirit of the eternal redemption. So the church, let us go back to the cross. Let us go back to the cross. That is where Jesus Christ went want, want us. We cannot be a church that is devoid of the cross. We cannot be a church that does not acknowledge the finished works of Calvary. I commit to preach nothing but Jesus Christ. Him crucified. Let us put back the cross. If you are listening to this word, you have not made the Lord Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior. I need you to understand that you are missing the power of the cross. It is in the cross that everything that pertains to your life happened. Your separation from God was destroyed by the cross. You can only be reconciled together with the Father when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. I want you to pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, I acknowledge what you did on the cross for me. Come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Say, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe that you died and rose again. And through your resurrection, I receive life and life in abundance. If you have prayed this prayer, find a Bible-believing church close to you. If you don't have a Bible-believing church, look at our Facebook page. Our address is there, numbers. Contact us. We would like to lead you to the real salvation of the cross. God bless you. Let us all pray. Father, we thank you for the cross. Oh, we thank you for the cross. We thank you for the finished works of Calvary. We thank you for what you did for us on the cross. We appreciate you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't forget to, to give. Remember, we are still in the competition of group A, group B. Group A is from August to February. Né? From August to February. Yeah. And from February to July is Group B. We are raising money, land, and building are coming our way. So choose your side. If you are born between August, August to what? June? August to February. If you are born, born between August to February, you are on Group A. If you are from uh, March to July, you are in Group B, Group Best. That's where Pastor is, by the way. So I would like us to keep giving and make sure that your group wins. God bless you. Use, use the account numbers there. Just write on reference group B or group A. God bless you. Enjoy your Sunday. And remember the finished works of Calvary. The cross. God loves you. Bye.